Good morning and welcome to The Morning Show with myself, Kelly, and my sister, Barbara. Uh, your daily dose of what's good in a world where everything seems just a little bit manic. I know, it's Mindful Mondays, but not to worry, Get Active TV has you covered from 7.30 a.m. all the way until the evening. Starting off with your Get Active at First Light with the seniors workout. So, going to get grandma and granddad working hard. Sounds good. Then don't forget, 8.30, that's when we've got Rise and Shine at 3 p.m. as well, you've got your afternoon stretch. We've got a variety of yoga, pilates, body weight workouts from Uppercut and House and all those other great people. Then at 10 o'clock, of course, you have your favorite sisters to keep you company for mm -hmm. an hour, mm -hmm. bringing you comedy, all the facts, life hacks, some really great guests coming on as well. And then at 12 p.m., there's also In Your House with Raj Kumar. Before 8 p.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we've got What You Cooking with Ben Logan. And then you finish off your evening nice and easy with John and Duncan at 9 p.m. So much fun coming your way, guys. And of course, with restrictions being eased slightly on a few things, which we'll get to in just a moment, uh, obviously it's going to be a great week ahead. But first, let's take a quick look at the numbers and see how the weekend happened for us. On Friday, we had a total of 932 cases. Saturday saw 447 and then it dropped, uh, or rather it came back up on Sunday to 657. But 13 community cases, 18 work permits, holders outside the dormitories and 626 in the dorms bringing us to a grand total of 18,205 now I know it sounds like a lot still yeah but we are actively testing and even those with mild symptoms those are the ones who are sp spiking our numbers a little bit I mean and it's kind of been yo-yoing up and down mm -hmm. a little bit and um, I've been listening to different reports and what people have to say about it especially the experts the scientists the people who know what they're talking about um, and they said just because the numbers drop, it doesn't, it, it, it's not too much cause for celebration because the numbers will go up and down, up and down. So let's not get overexcited, but it is nice to see that the numbers are dropping. I think it kind of lifts the spirits a little bit. Correct. Four weeks to go. What are you going to be doing in this final four-week stretch? We'll get to that in a moment. But first, let's take a look at the services that have reopened. Woo. Okay. Oh, will be, will oh, be. Will be. Will Today be opening. Is, uh, well, it's the Oh, it's the fourth. No, it's the fifth. As of tomorrow, TCM Needle Acupuncture will be back open for pain relief and management, which is a good thing I know for a lot of our elderly people as well. A lot of them rely on traditional Chinese medicine yeah. and acupuncture is always a good idea if you've got aches and pains to ease up. Although to be fair, I do wish physios would open as well for pain management. Because my shoulder is just, it's being really weird in the, the last few weeks. Touch touch wood, touch wood. Part of me's like, maybe I should go to a TCM. <laughs> well, touch wood, there, there are rumors that some of the physio practices are applying for exemptions. So fingers crossed, they will get those through. And the moment we hear of physio places opening up, we'll let you know which ones uh, that we know are definitely open and have, have those exemptions. Nice. Then, now, as of the, the most 12th, important of May, thing. 12th of May, Kelly was so happy yes. when she heard about this one. Hair salons and barbers will be open again, but again, it's for limited services. So you can go in, get, get your, your trim, cut. 30 minutes top, so, so get in, get out. <laughs> so, so basically, as of the 12th, you're going to see me on the 13th and I'll have like a nice blonde mop on top, but then my sides are all going to be brown. Yeah. Okay. Oh well, the roots will still be showing, but it means that my hairstylist Ange doesn't kill me because there was a point <laughs> over the weekend where I was like, okay, I'll do it myself. I have shears, I have a husband at home, let's do this. And it seems like everyone on my Instagram decided to poll that Justin should be cutting my hair. Uh, yeah, I was part of that. That would be hilarious. Okay. <laughs> um, it also means on the 12th that confectionery cakes and desserts for takeaway and delivery will still be open. But of course, I know for a fact that the one question on everyone's mind when they made that statement was, is bubble is tea, bubble tea <laughs> going to reopen? Well, we will, I, I will find out. Yeah, we'll find out. But if you are craving bubble tea, remember you can actually get koi from grain. That's true. That is true. It's that the, is true. The uh, they've we, also opened up in. retail laundry services on the 12th, that is, retail of pet supplies as well. So for all those of you pet mamas and porrents, uh, then, then at least you know that you've got access to all the things that you need for your, for your little fur babies. Fur babies. Mm -hmm. I never understood that term. Anyway, moving on to the good stuff. Every day we have some 
epic giveaways just for you guys who are tuning in with us each morning. The mechanics, super simple. Like and follow the Get Active TV Facebook page, share the morning show with us on your page, and comment with a simple answer to a question that we pose to you. Now, we want to trigger your thinking, make sure, you know, we don't just want you to comment for the sake of commenting, but really think about it. So I want to know what it is you are going to be doing with the final four weeks of Circuit Breaker. This is your final opportunity to do something at home that you would normally never get the time or chance to. So for me, I want to see how ripped and shredded I can get in the next four weeks. So I'm going to clean up my diet. I'm going to make sure I'm working out every single day on top of prepping for the show. Uh, and I'm going to see how good I can get a shape I can get in myself. In the on next top of being a mom. On top of managing the household, managing the household, making meals, and, and everything wild. else. Cool, cool. Have fun. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna aim a little bit lower, even though I clearly have fewer commitments. Mm -hmm. um, well, I've got to be a good daughter. I've got to prep for the show. I've got to. So what are you gonna do? Uh, I'm gonna try and work on my headstands. Okay. I'm not gonna be too ambitious and say handstands because that's a lot of work. Um, but headstands. I feel like getting up into a nice headstand. I'm not going to do it here because we don't have solid walls, but yeah, okay. it would be, it, be quite interesting to see the progression. So tell us what it is that you guys are going to be doing with the final four weeks of Circuit Breaker. And you'll be able to get a $50 voucher to the masses, which is actually a great way for you to then go and get that voucher and then go and spend it on Mother's Day. They they have a Luro fan on the, on the, menu. On the menu now. Mm. Um, yeah, good. Just, PSA, putting it out there, the real fan. Alrighty, so we're <laughs> gonna take a short break. When we return, we've got our resident little pocket rocket, Wani Mizban, joining us in to help us stretch our hip flexors and our quads. This time, we're gonna be using a ball. So in the break, go grab a ball, tennis ball, golf ball, whatever you have, and we will see you back in a couple of minutes, right here on The Morning Show with Kelly and Barbara. Flexing my quads. to the morning show with me, Kelly and Barbara. But Barbara is not here, as you can tell. I've <laughs> exchanged her for Pocket Rocket Wani Mizbun. Wani, thanks for coming back on the show. Thank I you. I really enjoy having you here because you always find these little props that we have at home <laughs> to, to make sure that we are getting a bit of a stretch. Yes. Uh, but before we dive into the stretch, uh, you're fasting. Yes, I am. Ramadan at the moment. Uh, can I just maybe explore the effects of Ramadan? Because everyone's working out 
uh, probably a lot more than they would typically during Ramadan. Um, is, is there some sort of guideline on what you should or shouldn't be doing? Um, I think the, the, the key thing about fasting, um, during, or rather working out during Ramadan, mm. is timing. Okay. Uh, because thirst is definitely one thing that you want to be very mindful of. Don't get too thirsty. Um, so I used to actually run right after a breakfast. Uh, sorry, not breakfast. Um, right bef uh, after the morning breakfast. Yep. Um, and depending on how much I push myself and how much I sweat, uh, then that will affect the thirst in the in the later part of the day. Yeah. Um, so now what I've changed is to actually time it to to break it down to two, maybe two parts of the day where I will train, maybe in the midday mm -hmm. for 30 minutes and right before um, breaking fast would be about 30 minutes or an hour. So, so I'm maybe, teaching like Maybe exert more in the evening, evening because yeah. you can then well, have you, a drink afterwards. Yes, kind of. But you, at the point of time also, it's the, the last hour, your, your body's already used out the glucose and you're kind of shaking at certain points already. Mm. So you, you just need to know how much to push yourself. So I recommend um, to do about 60 to 80%. So okay. don't go 100%. Uh, but of course, I mean, this is not the point of time where you want to look for personal best, personal records. Um, not just take really. it easy. Take it take easy. It, take it easy. Yeah. Just be there's a little so bit mindful. so many things you can still do. You can still do it. It's not an issue. Um, and there's a lot of um, the Malay Muslim, um, or rather I'll say just Muslim uh, trainers out there who are still training and teaching. Yep. I, tra time. I trained with one the other day and I, th I thought it was fantastic. Okay. So then one thing you can definitely do is stretching. What are yes. we going to be doing today? Uh, so today, so the first day we did was um, foam rolling. Yes. Um, so my fascia. Last week we did the stick. So today, Sticks. today we're going to use a ball. Okay. So usually it's a lacrosse ball. Okay. But uh, <laughs> that was a terrible throw, Mimi. <sighs> she was like, "It'll be a great idea. I'll throw it to you on set." Ouch. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's a great throw. Yeah. So I've got a baseball. So usually it's like a lacrosse ball. Mm -hmm. So you've got a tennis ball I've with got you. A tennis ball. Um, so baseball is softball. Softball is actually the bigger size, right? Um, those are actually comfortable and it depends on the size of the ball itself um, and also the density of the ball. You can hit different points of the body. Okay. So the golf ball is best for the foot. Oh, yeah, I can yeah. imagine. Yeah, it's really nice though. Yeah. It sounds like a, a little bit like torture. Um, okay, <laughs> let's go for it. So today we're going to focus uh, on the hip flexors because um, I assume a lot of you are actually doing a lot of workouts and not enough stretching. Uh, so if you're doing yoga and mixing up with um, hip, that's great. Um, but if you're not and you're not stretching enough, and you, if, even if you're seated mm. at the desk all day, yep. the hip flexors are actually going to be tight. It's just shortening yes. the whole day. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to actually target that. Go on then. Now, one of the key things is easy. This, this is quads. So, so I'm going to ditch the shoes for yeah, this okay here we go all right to. okay yeah let's go so what we're going to look for you know that six pack line yep the yeah. one that i don't have <laughs> <laughs> we all have it but imagine that line okay, going down so the ones on the sides yes right? on yep. the sides and then you know the hip bone yep okay so the um you want to actually place the ball yep on that six pack line right which is in line with the hip bone itself got it so we do it there okay okay so we're not just going to press. The most ideal is to put all your body weight on it. Does that mean we have to get down? Yes, darling. I spend so <laughs> many of these shows like either in on a the ground or lying on the floor. Okay. So <laughs> if the ball is too small, like sometimes um, you may want to actually prop yourself up with a block yep. or a book, yep. um, whatever it is. So mine is fine. We're going to lay it down. Still got safe distancing between us, just so you know. Yep. We're okay. going to completely rest. Oh, right. Uh, okay. We're just going to chill. Okay, I yeah. can chill. I yeah. can do this. So what we're going to do is to breathe. Focus on the breath and allow the ball, um, the ball to kind of penetrate through, basically. Oh, I can so feel... So you should feel the release yep. uh, of, the, of the hip flexors, basically. So one thing, once you feel like, okay, it's... It's good. It's relaxed already. What you're gonna do is to bend the knee. Oh, okay, and then lift the leg up. Oh, so it gets. Oh deeper. my goodness me! Oh my goodness me! And then release. And you really have to breathe, <gasps> Kelly. Breathe. <gasps> you really have to focus on like so what relaxing. You can do, yes, and Kelly, what you can do, right? Yes. Squeeze the bum. Oh. Squeeze your bum and then do it. 
oh my goodness me. So you relax. So you get that um, relief of the hip flexors, but you get to work the glutes at the same time. This is insane. Yeah. Like I cannot actually describe the feeling that my hip flexors are feeling right now. Like it's a very swan, <laughs> for lack of a better word, it's like, it's swan, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so how long would we stay in this position? Um, so the, the max you want to do it for is maybe about two minutes. Okay. So you release, um, it, so you, this is not necessary, yep. um, but if your hip flexors have been like, or your back sometimes, mm -hmm. the low back has been uh, aching, yep. uh, this is actually a way that you may want to release because the, the hip flexors are the psoas, mm -hmm. goes all the way to the back. That's right, a lot of people don't realise that some of your lower back pain actually originates in your hips at the front. Yep. Um, so the whole body is so interconnected, it's ridiculous. Okay, um, just one more exercise? Yes, one more exercise that I love to uh, want to teach is actually okay. called the bretzel okay. um, stretch. Show I face you? Yes, yeah. you, you face okay. me and you show so, me what to do. So this is the leg I release, right? So yep. I'm just going to um, lay on my right, support yep. my head, top leg out in front. Mm -hmm. I'm going to lift the foot of the bottom um, bottom leg, okay. and I'm going to twist. So oh. by pulling this, I this gets the quads. I don't even know if I quads. can get in that position, okay. This gets the quads. Okay. So and then as you rotate, lie down and you here, turn your head, that leg there. you okay. get to very open good. up your chest. Oh, that feels nice. Yeah? Oh, very nice. So the more you pull your, your thigh back, the more you can get your quads, um, and also your glutes to work. Yeah. Yeah, and you can chill here. It's a very glamorous position. I know. You know. Yeah. Fantastic. So, sometimes you may support your head with a prop if you yep. want to, like a pillow or something. Okay, so yeah. whilst I continue to stretch out the other side during our break, uh, Wani, thank you so much for joining us. I'm, I'm just going to chill here for a yeah, little while more. Uh, we're going to go for a short break, but when we return, uh, Barbara jumps back in and we chat with one of our good friends about their working from home situation. Don't go anywhere. This is The Morning Show with Kelly and Barbara.
back to the morning show with Kelly and Barbara. A lot of you are at home, That's working right. from home, juggling the children. You're on Zoom calls all day. Uh, but what we'd like to know is, what has your home setup been like? I mean, I, I rejigged my entire room. You rejigged your entire room. <laughs> my entire living slash kitchen space slash dining space has become a giant working office. As in where you can fit things in. Yeah, it, it is getting a little bit ridiculous. Mm. But we've had a little bit of time to get into a groove, but there's always things that we can do to improve our home setup because it looks like we're going to be here for a little while more. Just a little bit. And given that it's Mindful Mondays. Yes, exactly. So we thought we would bring in the experts. So we've got Vice President. President of Leapfrog Global and also head of Armageddon, Wanda Hu, joining us um, from her home working setup. Wanda, how are you? Good. How are you guys? Not We're too okay. bad. We're, We're good. okay. How's <laughs> how's working from home working out for you? Uh, it's it's different. It's a bit tough sometimes. In what sense? Um. So so I'm from Leapfrog, where we do. Uh, all kinds of hardware. We sell things like monitors, keyboards, mice, speakers, it's basically the, the stuff you would need if you were, were working from home. So surely you've got uh, like the perfect, the setup. perfect <laughs> setup, like the best access to all the best equipment. Oh, I've, I've been so, uh, okay, so work from home has actually just uh, properly kicked in for us because we're part of essential services. So only I think for sometime last week, they okay. decided to cut down on our manpower and then uh, the number of manpower that's in the office. So then most of us had to start working from home. Um, yeah, so it's only really start, just started for us, but I'm, I'm getting my setup together as, as of like this week. <laughs> So, so tell us a little bit about some of the essential things that you deem are absolutely necessary when you are working from home. Oh, um, so I work off my laptop. Uh, definitely, you probably would need like something with a microphone at home. Because uh, if you're using your, your laptop or your uh, base mics, it usually doesn't sound very good. It's not clear. Um, yeah, mostly that. And then probably a good keyboard at home. Because if you work off your laptop all the time, um, it's a bit, it's it's hard to type quickly and work quickly. Mm. So I, I bought myself another keyboard to, to put up at home. I was going to say Barbara and her typos in the script. It's not me when you look when you're getting used to a new keyboard that's not your laptop keyboard. It it yeah. feels different and you get a lot of typos and you're like, look, as long as you understand what I type, <laughs> I think we're all good. Like how uh, Rip became something else the other day. I don't Ripper know. Ripper or whatever. Um, <laughs> anyway, so, so going back to working from home, obviously like you deal with a lot of customers who are trying to build their home setups. Are home setups expensive? Yeah. Because there's suddenly a lot of equipment that people feel like they need to purchase. Um, and A lot of things are sold out. Yeah, a lot of things are sold out. So so how does one go about building a proper home setup and what, what does that look like? Uh, well, you you really so for me because I'm working off a laptop, it's kind of different. I just bring my work home. But for a lot of our customers, like what I observed, uh, there were many people buying monitors, and it doesn't have to be expensive. Uh, a good monitor can only cost you maybe uh, 150 or so, 160. Oh. Um, and then for a PC that's able to handle basic work, so Excel, Word, PowerPoint, things, regular programs you use for work. Um, that will only set you back maybe about five hundred dollars. So oh. all in all, you probably will be looking at some spending something like seven hundred dollars to do that's, a basic home setup. That's actually not too bad because. It I mean, I think in my head, when I was thinking about building an entire home setup, I was thinking sort of like the thousands of dollars. Now, LeapFrog also specializes sort of within your various brands that you have yeah. in making peripherals affordable for the masses. Um, in terms of like mice, keyboards and all that sort of thing, like what, what are people spending and what's the threshold for that? So what we've done is that to help out people who well, don't have a home set up and really need one. Um, we've started selling refurbished items on the website. So if you, you're okay with it being something that was used as a demo at some point, um, it can be just $5 for a wireless mouse. Five? It's, like the, um, it's wow. like the sample section of clothing stores. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. 
Yeah, because because otherwise it just goes to waste. You kind of just toss it if if nobody buys it. That's... Um, keyboard is also about there, like five to ten dollars. You 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 got yourself set. What? That's ridiculous. That's yeah. awesome, and that's on the website itself. Uh yeah, we have a refurbished section on the website. And let's just talk about the impact of COVID on your business. Obviously, because you are an essential service, you're providing people with things that they actually do need right now if they're, if they're kitting out their stuff. How has your business been impacted by this whole COVID-19 situation? Uh, so in terms of like sales, it's been about the same. Like we don't feel, when you look at the numbers, you can't see what's really going on. But uh, when you look at the buying patterns, it's shifted entirely. So everybody's bought everything online because you can't go out. There's no retail stores open. Mm. Um, we've had to kind of like shift our whole business because we used to be 80% retail. So now we are like 90% e-commerce. Wow, that's a, that's a do. huge shift. And was that a difficult thing for you to do and pivot within a very short time frame? We're just, we're just trying to understand the sort of economic impact of of COVID, COVID on, on our local businesses, because mm. you, you are a local yeah. company. Uh, I think for everybody, it's a bit different. So I do know like uh, some of them who were doing e-commerce in the first place, to them it's like, oh, suddenly, oh it's just a boom in business. Um, but for us, because we used to do 80% retail, um, the way our office was structured in terms of the manpower, the warehousing, it was catered towards that. So now we had to kind of reorganize everybody. So the job scope, like thankfully my team was quite cooperative in terms of changing of job scope and, and doing things that they didn't use to do. Mm -hmm. um, so we kind of just shifted everyone from doing retail marketing to e-commerce marketing and e-commerce buying. And in this transition, so you guys only really started working from home like last week onwards. Do you think it's really set in for you uh, working from home? Have you faced any major challenges yet? Um, are, there, are there any distractions or what are you trying to do to make sure that you can stay focused while at home? Uh, it's it's hard because there's two of us working from home. You, you want to come in for a bit? Hey. Are we, are we going to have so an extra yeah, head this, pop in? I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I, I have. <laughs> I, I, we've got two people working from home, so it's tough because like if I've got a call and we're in the same space, it, it doesn't quite work out. So yeah. we've got to take turns taking calls in the kitchen and things like that. Uh, I also have a dog at home, so she, she thinks I'm jobless or something. She's she me must be loving so how much you're at home though. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. That's worldwide <laughs> she's, she's overall is just like really happy that everyone's at home all the time. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Well, once just just to wrap this up, then if people are looking for peripherals, where can they go to get their hands on some of your stuff? Um, you can check us out at www.leapfrogglobal.com. That's with a single G, so L E A P F R O G L O B A L dot com. Um, you can also check out Q10 to our IT uh, or Shopee and Lazada. We are listed on all of those platforms, so if we've got like some discount or whatever on all of those platforms, you can find us there. Fabulous. Awesome. You can put all your vouchers and coins to good use there. Well, Wanda, thank you so much for sharing with us about your working from home setup. If you are working from home as well, maybe you should just send us a photo. What does your home work up yeah. setup look like? Like, I'd, right. I'd love to know what your working from home situation looks like. Mine usually involves Sienna crawling all over <laughs> my shoulders. <laughs> We're going to be taking a quick break, but when we come back, lots more mindful Monday shenanigans coming your way.
I love how this rush gear makes me feel. Every time I put it on, I feel super powerful. My training is super intense, so I need something like this that's gonna make me feel strong and ready to go. And welcome back to The Morning Show with Kelly and Barbara. Now, just a quick reminder, if you want to get your hands on that $50 voucher from the masses, don't forget to comment and tell us what are you going to do with the remaining four weeks of the circuit breaker. Are you going to learn a new kitchen skill? Are you going to learn a new exercise? Master something in that to-do list that you've never quite got around to doing. Now, part of Mindful Mondays, we like to talk a lot about what's going on in the business aspect of the world. Um, so today, I have with me the owner of The Ring, Rushdie Haja. Haja. Yes. <laughs> Saying that right. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Rishti. Bonjour, um, Barbara. Oh, bonjour. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I am uh, very bad at French. Um, so, tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been in Singapore? You know, the family. I mean, you've got a new baby. Yes. So, congratulations on Thank that. Thank you very much. Yes. So, arrived in Singapore in 2009. I was part of a project for a banking industry. Okay. Uh, so, I'm from Monaco. And uh, it was supposed to be a one month project that turned into one year and now that turns into almost 11 years. Wow, okay, so you, you opened up the ring which is a boxing gym. How did you first get into boxing yourself? So at an uh, early age, uh, around 16 years old, oh. which was early in that time because boxing was not as democratized as it was uh, as it is right now. Yeah. So I turned into boxing to <laughs> I turned into boxing to learn disciplines, mm. learn to externalize a uh, few things that I was only uh, able to externalize during the classroom. So ah, it helped a lot. I see. <laughs> so you were in Singapore, obviously you came on um, part of a bank, you said. Exactly. Right, so at what point did you make that transition from not working in mm. a bank anymore to opening up your own gym. Indeed, so it was a kind of coincidence. I always had the desire to open a boxing gym or to be part of the boxing industry because mm. back then at home, I was head of the boxing association. Oh, after the years, yes, okay. a, a, a little known fact. But um, I was looking for shorts, boxing shorts. And we used to have a sporting goods uh, shop in uh, Robertson Key where I used to live. So I go there and I try to check and the shop is closed or has, has moved out. Yeah. And then I open one door, two doors, and then I bump into the, now the ring. So this space which was in uh, Ader oh. Herencia in Kimiam Road. Yes. And I had this vision, I don't know if you've seen the movie, The uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, where he puts his goggles yeah. and can see what happened in Envision this. Envision everything. It was exactly. Wow. It was exactly and like I must, so I train at the ring as well. Yes. Um, and it's a beautiful space. You've got the high ceilings, you've got the ring, and, and you've managed to partition it quite well. You've got your strength and conditioning area. You've got the area where the Muay Thai is held. Um, you've Indeed. also got the, the boxing area and the bags. Um, how, how was it building up to you know, creating this all-encompassing gym? Course. So the, the, main, the main thing was to create a flow of energy. So there's no partition. The mm. only partition is the existing pillars you know, from the building. The structural, yeah. So we try to, to have a lot of energy flowing and being modular because as you know as, as well, not only we're having the ring boxing community as a gym, yeah. but we also have events. Yes. And we, we, we hold events in the gym. And so we had to think how, how can it be modular so that it can turn uh, within an hour into an amazing, uh, you know, showcase for events. Well, yeah, so that's what I want to ask you about. First off, did you, when you were designing the gym and, yes. and the layout and everything, did you have that with events in mind? So it was not events, it was more, not events for the public, it was mm. more for the community, things right. that we would come all together. And at that time, Zul, who is our, our head of events, uh, our first, my first joiner, my first uh, uh, team uh, teammate, and he came with this friendly Fight Fridays, yeah. which was, uh, you know, first event we had about 15 people, including the team. <laughs> and so it's massive now. And now it's massive. It's indeed. huge. Indeed. Hundreds of people go down for this. Yes. What was it like, um, really? So you've got um, 
the friendly fry friend, yes. FFF. Friend, FFF, friendly fight Fridays. Yes. Okay, where there's no winner, no loser. Exactly. So I mean, you're let's right. be honest. Deep down, the, we all we all know. The, like, if you've gone in, you're like, okay, I did nail this or I didn't. But then you've also got the ring. Um, so we have TRFC. Ex exactly. That's the pinnacle, yes. which uh, which is with our uh, professional boxers. Mm -hmm. But before the TRFC, we have FFF. Okay. For everyone that wants to come in the community Just and give it a try. Exactly, okay. practice their skills. Then we have Elite Amateur, which we've done with the whole Singapore community, boxing community. So it's an open platform for our gyms. Olympic, exactly, different oh, okay. gyms. And there is a decision at this point there of is time. There's a decision. There's a clear like winner of exactly. this. Okay, okay, okay. Then we have the ring white collar boxing. So yes, for our the, white colors, yeah, yes, exactly. Yes, that's the one that's recently over the last, I would say, two exact. years, three years. One year that, only. Okay, one year. Yes. That's it's the fancy one, it's right? It's the fancy one, Ooh. exactly. It becomes a, like a show, mm. you know, not only of, of the boxing, but everything that's happening around. When he says show, he's not kidding. They've got the lights, they've got the the, the really big MCs, they've got performances going Fire on. Fire eater, we have a lot we of. We had things. the snake in exactly. at one point as well. Yes. Not sure if that was okay. Oh, oh. um, <laughs> Yeah, so what was it like transitioning or, or rather evolving from purely just running a gym to having to manage and run all these big events as well? So it was definitely challenging, but that was the best part of it. That was how our venture, we didn't design that to happen. Yeah. It came organically, it came you know, with our Just Friendly Friday to up to the professional boxers with you know, the World Boxing Council uh, involved yeah. and our coaches, which are also uh, our pro fighters that can showcase and show how, how they are teaching, how, what they are preaching, how mm. they can also showcase it into the ring Apply it. with elegance, with humility and with performance. Definitely. So obviously with everything that's happened in the last few months, um, a lot of businesses have taken a huge turn from being physically present to yeah. having to learn new things about being on the digital realm. Um, so what were the, we, we know that a lot of gyms have gone online. What were some of the challenges that you guys faced making that transition? The first challenge is that my coach are not actors. <laughs> so the first time they turned on live, I, I remember they were shy, they didn't know how to pronounce, they were, oh. but hey, they are fighters. Yeah. And challenge drives them and they strive into challenges. And right now, I know, uh, they are definitely actors. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so, so that was the first challenge. They're comfortable. The second is you're talking to your phone or to your camera. At that time, we had a very little setup, so it was phones. And you want to have that connectivity, you know, that interactions. Definitely. And this is what we are all missing. But we found out how to overcome that. So from just a phone with one screen, we, we came to a multi-screen. And then you can hear the people. You can see how they are behaving. Ah. And now that's when, you know, it's starting so to be... Evolved a little exactly. bit. Exactly. Okay. So you guys are going to be launching the Zoom exactly. classes. Exactly. We are launching our Zoom classes. It will be free for our, our members, all our community. And you can have more details if you uh, log into our website to see how you can join our Zoom classes. And if, let's say, if I'm not a member of the ring and I want to join these Zoom classes, also... Possible? It's um, possible. For a fee? Yes, for a little okay. fee. And, uh, a little fee. Yes. <laughs> Every, everyone's working on little fees <laughs> A nowadays. little fee. And that fee will also go for a good cause. Amazing. Now, we've, we've touched on the business aspect of things. Um, before we wrap it all up, um, I just want to touch on a little bit of the personal life. So you've got um, three kids now. Exactly. Uh, well, how old are they? So we have Ryan, four years old. Uh -huh. Jay, two years old and John Zion, which is just five months. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, well, congratulations on the Thank new baby. You. Um, how are you, you know, you and your wife handling everything at the moment, having to stay home with the kids, having to run a business? It's, it's like a rainbow at home. So b first of all, my kids became my bosses. I mean, just last Friday. I think most parents can uh, relate with that. <laughs> I was running a, a, a meeting at mm -hmm. home and I have the little one that comes and say, hey, Papa, can you go in your room because you're, you're talking too loud. Wow. <laughs> Which is usually the reverse. Yeah. We ask them to. But they are our bosses. First, also, they are our inspiration. So we are coming up, we are teaming up with my wife to find you know, ways on how to entertain them, on how to become their teacher as well. Teacher mm. in life, teacher at home. 
and that's that's beautiful and the last one they are our therapists because I've always put them into music. You know, mm. music is flowing always at home. And when they are singing, when they are dancing, we are definitely uh, not thinking we are in confinement. We think we are blessed Aww. to have them around. Well, yeah. that's lovely. Thank you so much for joining us You're today. Welcome, I think that was Thank a you very nice much for little way me. to end it. Uh, we are going to go for a quick little break, but we've got lots more when we come back. We've got a dawn in, I believe, and uh, she'll be going through how to master those yogi poses. Stay with us. Thanks for sticking around with us here on our Mindful Monday. How are you doing? Are you, are, you, are you okay today? Obviously, we had a nice long weekend, and I think it's given us an opportunity to sort of reconnect with ourselves. We had lovely weather on Saturday, which meant that for some of us, that we were actually able to get outside, go for a walk, actually spend time in, in the, the sun. sunshine. Yeah, I think Sunday might have been by far the longest stretch of sun we've had in a while. Saturday, you mean? No, Sunday, Saturday, was it was still quite short. It was very, very cloudy, whereas Sunday stayed bright for quite a while up oh, until true. the evening. True, true, true. Um, the, the clouds managed to hold off a little bit. I made some pancakes. I felt really proud of myself. It doesn't always look great. Uh, actually, maybe I'll bring in the video tomorrow and we'll show you my pancakes. Although they were kind of like crepes. I prefer crepes. Crepes? Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So... Barbara is still going to hone on the hone in on those culinary skills in I'm the final on four weeks of <laughs> circuit breaker. What are you doing? Maybe some of you want to work on like Barbara getting better at your yoga practice, all those poses that you want to do, looking a little bit more graceful. We'd Not love sure to hear if this from is you. An actual pose, but no, I don't think it's an actual okay. pose. So if you would like <laughs> to get a bit more graceful, tell us. We'd love to hear to find out what it is you are doing to make full use of this time. Because let's face it, we're probably not gonna get this sort of time again. Exactly, I mean, and four weeks is a long time. You know, if you've been thinking about this, a four week challenge that you've been meaning to do, but a lot of the time, you know, we spend a fair amount of our times traveling to work, mm -hmm. traveling back from work and being at work. So now that all that time is now your own and you're at home a lot, you have that extra, I don't know, one to two hours 
to really get into something that might only take five or ten minutes a day. That's right. So we're now going to break it down for you with Dawn, who is actually going to help you on your practice if you are looking to improve your yoga aspect in your life. Um, today we're going to be talking about the low lunge, releasing that lower back tension, which a lot of us have and have been building up over the past few weeks sat at home as well. Let's take a look and let's learn how to break it down. Hello and welcome to Break It Down, the time when we get to break down your favorite exercises and movements. So you know the ins and outs, the do's and don'ts, and hopefully to make the movements a little easier or hopefully a lot harder for some of you. My name is Dawn and today I'll be taking you through the low lunge. So all you need is a mat, let's get ready to go. But if you do try this at home, don't, don't forget to tag us at Get Active TV. Or if you've got any questions at all, feel free to shoot us a comment and I'll be happy to help. All right, so let's come into the middle of your mat. We're going to have your right foot come step forwards, one big step. Now, if you find that that is difficult for you um, to do a big step without losing your balance, just have a chair or a wall handy, hold on to it, and then get your step forwards. And if you didn't get a big enough step forwards, you're going to just wriggle, 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 wriggle your foot forwards. And then cushion the back knee if you need to. I'm very lucky I've got fake grass under me today, so it's very cushy. But if you need to, put a towel under your knee, right? So it's, it's less painful. We're gonna have your hands rest on your thigh or maybe one hand on the chair or the wall or a table. And you're gonna slowly sink your hips forwards and down in the direction of your front heel. So square your chest, square your hips towards the front of the mat. Now look at my lower back, all right? You wanna avoid doing something like this. So just kind of collapsing around the lower back. Avoid doing that. It can get very painful for those of you who have existing issues with your lower spine. So keep your baby crunching muscles on and then start to lean forwards. How do you know if your baby crunching muscles are on? You just pretend somebody's going to punch you in your stomach. Good enough. Or you can hug a tree and then lean forwards. All right. So when you do this, it already helps you to switch on your baby crunching muscles and it helps you to ensure that your inner corset, your inner weight training belts for guys, is switched on and protecting your lower back while you're at it as you sink your hips forwards and down. Why do we want to do a low lunge? Because it helps us to stretch the hip flexors, your deep psoas muscles, right? And this muscle actually connects from your lower back, runs across the front of your hips, and connects to the top of your thigh. When you stretch this band here, it helps to release tightness and tension around your lower back. Also, it's great for countering the effects of long hours of sitting. So as opposed to having your pelvis um, become stagnant, right? The area just closed in. This helps to open it up and facilitates more circulation as well. Stay there for about 10 breaths or maybe a minute. And then how do you get out of it? Hold your chair, hold the wall, or just slide your front foot in. And then we do the same thing on the other side. So stepping your left foot forwards. We're gonna wiggle, wiggle, wiggle if you need to. Hold your props if you have to. Cushion your knee if you have to. Shift your hips forwards once again. I talked about the lower back. Let's talk about the shoulders now. Shoulders unshrugged, armpits dropping down towards your waist, and then just sink your hips forwards. Don't forget, baby crunching muscles are still on. How do you make this movement a lot deeper? Keep shifting your hips forwards and down to the point where maybe you can even come and touch the ground. All right, so if you have yoga blocks with you, great. Grab a hold onto them and help yourself go down lower. The further forwards you bring your hips towards your heel, the deeper the stretch you're going to feel to the front of your pelvis. And this time, it's going to be on my right side. Whichever leg is behind, that is the one where I'm going to be feeling that stretch to my hip flexor. All right, so again, staying here for about a minute or 10 breaths. The reason why you want to stay there for long enough is to make sure that you do give the, mus the body a chance to get over its fight or flight mode because the first thing it does is to want to protect itself when you go into a stretch. So it's going to tense up. Its first reaction is to tense up. And then as you stay there for long enough, it's like, hey, I'm not getting injured. I'm, I'm not in a dangerous situation. I'm going to start to release and just melt further into that stretch. Now slowly bring your weight back. Slide your leg back in. So that is one of the ways that you can do your low lunge, otherwise known as Anjaniyasana in yoga. We're going to do the same thing again, but I'm going to show you another variation that's going to help you go into a slightly deeper stretch for that same muscle I mentioned. Again, step forwards, right foot. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle if you need to, or just take another step forwards, right? 
shifting your hips forwards and down, making sure that your inner corsets are on, your inner weight training belts are on, cushioning your knees if you need to. Now watch, my right leg is in front. So I'm going to extend my right fingers towards the floor and then extend my left arm up. And I'm going to continue reaching down towards the ground with my right fingers. Careful to make sure that my front knee stays above my ankle. So again, if you need to hold onto something like a block or a chair or a wall, the key is to just try to lean your weight towards the right side. I'm not going forwards. The moment I lean forwards, that stretch goes away. So be cautious to keep your shoulders over your hips as you lean to the side. Now I really feel that stretch intensify on that right side. So for those of you who do suffer from lower back tension, lower back pain, I do encourage you to do the low lunge on a daily basis. Not a regular basis, but a daily basis. In fact, a few times a day if you can. Again, we're going to stay there for about 10 breaths to a minute, making sure that you're also breathing in a way that facilitates you to relax. And then very slowly, we're going to come back up to the center. Go ahead and shift your weight towards the back leg and slide your leg back in. Coming back down onto your right knee. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Once again, left foot steps forwards. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Shift the weight forwards. Keeping your inner corsets on. Left fingers reach down. Right fingers reach up. And then we're going to extend and try to reach for the floor. Of course, if you can, go ahead and touch the ground. All right, but ensure that you're not collapsing around the lower back. The moment you do feel pain, your body's trying to tell you something is going on, something is wrong, all right? And then just back it off a little bit. Just go to the point where you feel the stretch, good enough, all right? Holding it there. I'm going to stay there for another two more breaths. And it's really, really, really good and helpful for those of you with tightness around the lower back, like I mentioned. So feel free to repeat it a few more times throughout the day. And then very slowly, coming back towards the center, shift your weight back, maybe hold onto the wall, and then take a seat. So there you go, your low lunge, easy peasy. Thank you for joining me on Break It Down. It's time for a quick break, but when you come back, it's over to Kelly and Barbara once more. Don't go anywhere. Good morning, welcome back to The Morning Show with Kelly and Barbara. We're both back with you, all stretched out. Mm -hmm. We've talked about a little bit about business today, 
Um, we've also talked about working from home and how you can have the most epic setup as, pos as far as possible. I know, it's actually ridiculous to think about um, all these little things that you could have to make your working life that little bit easier. But of mm -hmm. course, it doesn't have to be expensive and you can modify it at home as well. I mean, at the moment, my current work top situation is a standing desk. So I stand at my kitchen counter and I prefer to be standing because otherwise my hip flexors are just getting really, mm -hmm. really very tight. tight. And speaking of which, we've actually managed to help you stretch out your hip flexors today. So hopefully if you've been sat down for extremely long periods of time, then at least now you know what to do uh, to release and ease those aches and pains in your hips and your back. Not going to lie, I am thinking about getting a real chair because I was previously, well, I'm currently using um, one of the armchairs that we have on the balcony and I put it into my room. Yeah, um, sounds but comfy. But it's quite, it's quite low. So I put a pillow on it. So you're typing like <laughs> so this. So I, I put a big pillow on it. So I'm sitting on the pillow, but then I kind of end up squatting on it instead. So I'm not just having normal tight hip flexors. I'm having like super tight squattable hip flexors. I really want to see a photo of you at your workstation. Anyway, oh, I'll show you. <laughs> we've still got an entire week ahead of us for this show. So make sure you're joining us tomorrow because it is Trending Tuesday. And what better to talk about than um, food, nutrition and maybe growing your own things at home. We've got uh, Charlotte May coming in. She's what a nutritionist, she's a presenter. Um, so and she's, she's gonna all be around awesome human being. Uh, yep. We've also got the Edible Garden City coming in to show us how we can grow our own microgreens from things that we have at home as well. Much like your the front of your house. Yes, exactly. Where you've just thrown stuff out and see what started growing. Exactly. Pumpkins, anyone? Don't forget, we've <laughs> also got an Under Armour promo coming up on Thursday, That's a whopping 40% right off on underarmour.com. Stay tuned for all those details. We will start only putting be putting things in your shopping bag. Exactly. <laughs> start, start, start adding to cart now, but we will only be giving you that code on Thursday. So you have to stay tuned and watch the show in order to get that code. Alrighty, we are done and dusted for today. That's right, we hope you have a mindful Monday and a mindful week ahead. Mm -hmm. But whatever it is that you're doing today, make sure that you're staying safe, staying strong, and make sure you stay, stay at home. home.